Hey, Ron, it's Darren, the interviewer. How's it going there? It's going, Darren. Where are you? Where are you located? I'm in uh, Long Island in a town called Long Beach. Have you ever been out here? I know you're a Staten Island guy. Uh, yeah, no, I, I live in Manhattan a long time. I visited Long Island many times. Uh, been on that freeway many times. <laughs> yeah, things are good out here in Los Angeles. Uh, sunny and warm and nobody's supposed to go out. <laughs> right. Same <laughs> so they, deal is right about, here. Yeah. I mean, this is the most unusual time ever. I mean, it's unbelievable. Let's first talk about Streetlight Harmonies. Uh, when did you film your parts for the movie? Uh, it was last year sometime. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, uh, Vito Pacone, from the group The Elegance, which is a great doo-wop group from the late 50s. They had a big hit called Little Star. Uh, they used to uh, rehearse in my cellar. Uh, and uh, when I was only like 12 or 13. And uh, I remember thinking, boy, these guys, they're good, but where are they, are they ever going to take off? And, of course, they signed a record deal a few months later and, be, and had the number one record in the country that year. It was an amazing occurrence. So he got me involved in this, and that's when I rec uh, did. And he said, uh, you should be a part of this. You're, you know, you've got a big, long musical career. So I, I went ahead and uh, uh, videoed it out here in Los Angeles. Had you met the director and writer Brent Wilson before filming? No, it was a first. Got it. And I'd assume you've met a lot of the people in the film. The film has a lot of great people in it. Lala Brooks, Brian Wilson, etc. Uh, besides Vito, who else did you really know as a friend? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Jeff Barry, who is uh, one of the great writers of the, of the 60s. Uh, and I worked on many projects together, including my vocal group, <laughs> The Archies. So uh, I knew Jeff. I knew Brooks Arthur. Uh, I knew Little Anthony of the Imperials, who is, what a great history he has. Uh, we actually traveled together in the mid-60s on a Dick Clark caravan of stars. And so I worked with, I worked with, uh, I used to play cards with Little Anthony, and uh, it was great. He, he always won. He was a great card player. <laughs> well, I've known your music my whole life, but I didn't really know who Ron Dante was until the Gilbert Gottfried podcast interview. Was that one that you found opened up a lot of doors to people? You know, he is very popular and very funny, and everybody, you know, it was the loosest interview I have ever done. And I, yes, I got an amazing amount of hits on my website and my Facebook page after that um, podcast because it really exposed all the stuff I did in a very fun way. Uh, he he was very knowledgeable. I, I could tell it. Uh, Gilbert had done his homework. I loved we sang Sugar Sugar together. It's one of the classic moments of my career, singing with Gilbert screaming Sugar Sugar in my ear. It was very funny. I can only imagine so. That is a duet that I will never get out of my ears for better and for worse. But going through your credits, it's incredible to me that you're not only the featured singer, you're also the producer on various things, including actual stage productions. How do you like to be thought of? Do you like to be thought of primarily as a singer? You know, I, I figured in, in, I like to be, um, basically, I'm a singer. That's, I started as a singer. I will end as a singer performing. In the middle, I decided to, you know, try all the, all the things I could. And, and, and people gave me the opportunity to produce them, other artists. Uh, Broadway shows came my way since I was based in New York, right? All the studios are in the, brood, the theater area of, New, of Manhattan, so I always wanted to be a producer of uh, maybe theater, and I got involved. So I like to be thought of as, as a kind of uh, a singer who, who can produce things. Well, given the rich history that you've had in pop music and beyond, back when you started, you had to actually be able to sing. There was room for almost no studio trickery whatsoever, aside from, you know, sped up Alvin and the Chipmunks kind of vocals. Now, obviously, these days, people can fix everything in post. But when did you have to first get involved with digital technology on that end as a singer? Uh, probably, uh, you know, about 20 years ago when it started, when Auto-Tune came out and, and uh, different th programs, uh, great programs that you could uh, actually tweak a vocal and make it, and make it in tune. Uh, I, just, I was producing other acts. But I must say that most of the acts that I worked with and the people that I, the new groups that I worked with and uh, new s solo singers, I chose really good singers. I, I came from the old school of producing where you have to have the goods first because once they get out there live, uh, people are going to discover that uh, they're not quite as good. 
So uh, I, I was very, I, I'm, I'm definitely producing through a computer. It was a lot of fun. It's like the greatest train set anybody could ever have as a producer, <laughs> kind of, because I can tweak everything. I can play with everything. If I want a certain bass, I can actually get the actual bass player of the Beatles and use their sound. You know, I can use, I can use Paul McCartney's sound uh, because it's, it's available. And uh, it, it's an amazing, I love the digital world. It, it's a great, big, wide, open uh, box of candy, so to speak. And from what I've heard recently of you, you are still singing in top form. How is it that you've held on to your voice all these years? Is it more genetics or do you actually do a lot of vocal warm-ups? You know, I do, I do uh, take care of my voice. Uh, I never smoked and that really helped the throat. I didn't abuse my body. So the instrument is, you have to take care of it like a good guitar or a good piano or so, any other instrument. I've been very fortunate that I had good genes uh, growing up in a, an Italian neighborhood, being an Italian boy. A lot of us had that gift to sing. And, and uh, you know, my dad sang, my uncle sang, but they never made a career out of it. And I did. But that's what I attribute it to. And I do, I do vocalize, especially before a tour, uh, any kind of uh, local performance or, you know, major performance around the country, which I, I do almost every summer. I go out on the Happy Together Tour, which is a big oldies tour that tours about 60 cities all summer. But I vocalize. And related to Happy Together, I know that you filled in for a tour doing the feature set of the Turtles every night. Did you know all those songs and the harmonies before you got on stage for the first time? Yes, yes. I knew I knew most of their big hits from Happy Together, She'd Rather Be With Me, uh, all, all the big hits that they had. Uh, I grew up on their uh, great records and often imitated the backgrounds that they did. Uh, you know, when I, I had a group called the Cufflinks, and we, uh, we did a thing called uh, Tracy, a song called Tracy, and it sounds kind of like it could be, it could be the Turtles or, or the Grassroots or any of those groups. But I knew the whole catalog, and I, I just loved singing that every night. So you're still touring, of course, the Gilbert Gottfried interview. I'm going to recommend anyone who hasn't heard it do so because they'll learn your full history and all that. But what I'm finding that is a lot of the people who are the key voices and session players are actually able to cut sessions remotely. For example, some dentist says, I want to get an album done and I want the players to put on my favorite albums. Is that something that you've been able to do from your home recording setup? You know, uh, I haven't done that. Uh, it can easily be done. It's a little impersonal because I really like the contact of all the people in a room. It's very important to have the chemistry of each person's personality and how they're you know, contributing to the sound in the room. And so uh, I'm not a big fan of digitally doing it only uh, um, uh, when necessary. You know, I have done a few things where we would, we would do a remote of a bass player in New York and I'm here in Los Angeles or whatever. So uh, I've done it, but, you know, I'd really prefer the, uh, you know, the, the real live uh, group. So besides promoting Streetlight Harmonies and hopefully going out on Happy Together again, what are you up to at the moment and what's passing your time as we kind of all wait home due to the pandemic? You know, I'm keeping in touch with friends and uh, fellow musicians. And it, it's wonderful because we have more time to talk. Uh, we, to catch up, to f find out about their, what their lives are really like, like my friends um, Peter Noon from Herman's Hermits or uh, Freddie Cannon or some of these people, James Darren, a good, good actor, singer. We, we, we have long conversations now because we have the time. So I'm passing my time doing that. I'm keeping in touch with the fans, uh, watching, watching what goes on on Facebook. I've got like 10, 15,000 uh, fans on, on Facebook that uh, keep in touch with re regularly. <laughs> So that's what I've been doing, and uh, just hoping for the best. I know that this this documentary is. I was so happy to be a part of this documentary because it finally honored the real people who started this uh, doo-wop generation that influenced all the generations that came after. So I was really proud to be a part of that, and I'm keeping in touch with those people too. And happy together is planned for the summer. I assume if all goes well. You know, we pushed back the first dozen uh, dates. We're supposed to start late May. May. Uh, it looks like it'll be late June that we start, and we'll reschedule on the other side in September and October, the ones that we'll miss early on. That's, that's what they tell me. Uh, we don't want to jump, on, uh, jump, jump out too soon. Uh, it, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? Uh, you know, we want to make sure we don't put all our fans in a, 
in the in the in the venue, and then people start to get sick. So, but uh, we'll we'll definitely happy together. We'll be out there later this year, and uh, we'll be having a lot of fun with our fans. Well, two quick questions, and then you're a free man. And the first one is: Is there something that you wish more people knew about Ron Dante besides the great music? Uh, not really. Uh, I have to say, most of my life is out there <laughs> in different snippets. People know how I became a musician, why I picked up the guitar. I fell out of a tree when I was 12 or 13. I broke my arm. They had, I had <laughs> to play, play a guitar or a piano, so that I played guitar. People know about me. I just, I just want them to enjoy the music that I've made, and I'll be putting out a new uh, 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 anthology uh, later this year of, of a lot of the unreleased cuts and a lot of the uh, groups that I sang for. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I am looking forward to that as well. So in closing, Ron, any last words for the kids? Uh, stay safe, uh, stream the music, and, and enjoy your friends. Great. Thank you. You gave me so much to work with. Hope to see you live in New York very soon, man. Thanks for your time. You bet. Call me or I get in touch. I'll make sure you have tickets in New York when we play uh, Westbury or the St. George. Outrocast.